Of jump scares, stop making you jump. Do you think the amount of slashes should be slashed? And have you started to find gore a bit of a bore? That's horror and it's day. Welcome back to the Adrian Bauer Project. I'm Adrian with a face for radio. And on today's episode, I'm not doing one, but two plain talking reviews on Hereditary and Midsummer. So, cue the music. <laughs> Just when you thought you'd seen everything you could have seen in the horror genre, along came Ari Aster and his debut film, Hereditary. When Ellen, the matriarch of the Graham family, passes away, her daughter Annie, her husband and their two children begin to unravel cryptic and increasingly terrifying secrets about their ancestry. The more they discover, the more they find themselves trying to outrun the sinister fate they seem to have inherited. Before we actually get into the film, I think we'll look at the uh, cast list. Tony Collette and Gabriel Byrne, fantastic actors. They have been for many, many years. You've got newcomers, Millie Shapiro, Alex Wolfe. They were absolutely superb in this film. And then, of course, you've got Anne Dowd, who plays the sinister Joan. I don't think you could have got a, a stronger cast. And I think they go a long way to making this film the great success that it has been. If you're looking for wall-to-wall gore and jump scares every two minutes, this film isn't going to be for you. However, this film just keeps on giving. Um, It starts off a family in grief. Um, The matriarch, like I said in the synopsis, has passed away and Tony Collette's character is trying to deal with it. But certain little things start to creep in. And then about half an hour in, I'm not going to give any spoilers. There is another shock to the system, as it were. And it, it is a shock. You won't see it coming. Um, that just makes the family go down an even deeper spiral into despair until they're starting to discover that perhaps the mother um, had a bit more of a secret life than they uh, knew about. Um, like I say, it, it, it's a slow burner. It don't doesn't give away all its uh, little secrets all in one go. You do have to work at it. Uh, another f- thing I found about this film as well, whereas a lot of films... You can watch once or twice and then you probably had your fill of them and you put them away for a year or so. This film, uh, my wife have watched it, we're into double figures now and there's always something that you missed first time, second time, third, fourth time round. There's a lot going on in the background that you have to be aware of. Now you will miss these uh, Little details, not like I say, I'm not going to give spoilers away. You can discover them for yourself. That's the whole uh, enjoyment of these films. Um, but you'll miss them first time round because you're trying to concentrate on the plot. But on the second viewing, when you know what's happening and what's going on, then you can start and notice little things that you didn't pick up before. Uh, be it, uh, something in the background that you didn't notice before or there's a little detail that you'll pick up on that uh, is sort of like foreshadowing it and I think that's what makes this film absolutely superb because you're not going to get bored with it after the second or third time of viewing. (laughs) In fact my wife watched it every night um, for two weeks solid when we got the DVD 
it's a favourite horror film. And like I say, you sit and watch this. This is deserves all the plaudits it gets. I know the the cries out there say, so, "Oh, it's too slow. It's too slow." It's not too slow. It takes its time building up the tension, and that's what you're going to need in horror film today. Because I think too many horror films give away everything in the trailers. So half the jump scares aren't scares anymore because you're just waiting for that to, for them to happen. And that's the thing with jump scares nowadays. You're just waiting for the next jump scare to come along, and you're waiting for the next kill, and you're waiting for the next bit of gore. Well, that's not what this film is about. Um, it makes you think, it makes you sit down and uh, contribute a lot of your time into this film and I think you'll get a hell of a lot out of it. So I can't recommend this film highly enough, absolutely love it, so I'm going to give it five Evil Edna's. Released in 2019, we've got Ari Aster's tricky second outing. That film is Midsummer. Danny and Christian are a young American couple with a relationship on the brink of falling apart. But after a family tragedy keeps them together, a grieving Danny invites herself to join Christian and his friends on a trip to a once in a lifetime Midsummer festival in a remote Swedish village. What begins as a carefree summer holiday in the land of eternal sunlight takes a sinister turn when the insular villagers invite their guests to partake in festivities that render the pastoral paradise increasingly unnerving and viscerally disturbing. Ari asked second out in midsummer. A lot of people saying, could he reach the heights again if he did with hereditary? Well, starting with the cast, you've got Florence Pugh, Jack Rayner, William Jackson Harper, Villain Blondgren, all uh, new, newish names. It's a young cast and the standout performer for me, the always brilliant Will Poulter. Um, laugh if you want, but I think he could be the British version of Leonardo DiCaprio. I think he's got a brilliant future ahead of him. Everything I've seen Will Poulter in, he has been excellent. And in this film, I think he's one of the standout performances. Um, and I say, could this stand up against Hereditary and is it as good? I think before we start, we get one misconception out of the way. There's a lot of people said that this was just a copy of 1973's The Wicker Man. And it is, it isn't, it's, I think it's because it's set, it's a midsummer festival and it's a pagan festival. That's why people are just saying it's just a copy, but it's not. There, there are nods to that film, obviously, because, you know, they're set around the same time. But that is where the similarity ends. So if you've not watched this because you think it's just going to be a, a Wicker Man ripoff, then uh, no, put that assumption to one side because it isn't. The film starts off in a similar vein to what a registry did, where the character has a family tragedy. Um, the two main characters, Danny and Christian, played by Florence Pugh and Jack Rayner, um, they're on the verge of breaking up, but it's this that pulls them back together again. Um, a bit later on, it transpires that. Uh, Christian wants to go away to Sweden with a few of his mates to a, a festival in one of the friends' own village and it's like a, a pagan midsummer festival to which uh, Danny invites herself along. Um, I don't think Christian's friends really wanted to be there but after the events of what happened they can't really say no. Um, they get to the festival and all seems hunky dory, but then in good old Ariasta style, things start to take a turn. Now, there are a lot 
of uh, similarities between Midsummer and Hereditary. I say similarities, it's not carbon copy, but Harry Astor's got this way of making films that uh, you could all, almost say they are happening in the same universe if you want to go cinematic universes about it. Um, as before with Hereditary, it's a slow burner. You've got to commit some of your time into it and follow the development of the characters. He's not going to give away all his surprises, all in one go. And as before, this is another film that you can watch multiple times you will not get bored with because there'll be things in it that you miss the first time, second time, third time round. Um, I like Ari Aster's style of filming where they'll put something that you seem to think innocuous in the background. You don't take much notice of it the first time and second time round. Of course, the first time you watch the film, you're concentrating on the plot and all the plot devices and everything. Second, third, fourth times, that's when you start noticing little things, like I say, in the background. There are a lot of pagan style paintings that do a lot of foreshadowing. That's not giving any of the plot away, but when you watch the film, you'll know what I mean. And, and I say, there's, there's just little things that you won't notice the first, second, or even third time round that you'll start to pick up on. And I think this makes Midsummer another film that just keeps on giving and giving. You're not going to get bored with it like you would do a slashy film because with a slashy film you've had all the jump scares first time round, you've had all the kills first time round, so you know what to expect. Yes, you know what to expect with the story, but it's like I say, in the background there's little details, little things that people say, little things that people do that you wouldn't give credence to any other time that this little switch will go on and go, oh, I didn't, re didn't recognise that, I didn't see that first time around. Well, did you notice what they said there? This is just these little things that keep picking up and make this film absolute quality. Is it as good as the registry? I think it is, yes. I think it stands up. They are both brilliant films and it's bought a breath of fresh air to the horror genre, which I think was starting to get... Sorry about that, that was a little notice coming in. I think the horror genre is starting to get a little bit tired and jaded, um, especially because I think people have started running out, out of ideas. This is fresh ideas, and personally, me and my wife just cannot wait for the third Ari Aster film to come out. So, now I've got all that out of the way, what are my marks going to be? No surprises, no surprises, no prizes for getting there. I'm going to give Midsummer five evil Edna's. So, there you go. Hereditary and Midsummer. If you're looking for something different from your horror films, they're the films for you. I can highly recommend them. Right, that's the end of yet another episode. Hope you all enjoyed it. Please remember if you haven't subscribed already to do so, it's very much appreciated. And remember as well to share and like my videos and click the little notification bell so you know when I put my next videos up. And with that in mind, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I look forward to seeing you all again on the next episode of The Adrian Bell Project.